The $148 Million Breath Mint Last week, I was watching ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, and I watched him make the most astonishing declaration. And tonight, the judge now accusing Giuliani of defaming them again. First, after the 2020 election, Giuliani accused Ruby Friedman and her daughter, Shea Moss, without any evidence of tampering with votes. Giuliani at the time saying they were, quote, passing around USB ports as if they were vials of heroin or cocaine. Giuliani then doubling down on his false claims to our Terry Moran after the trial ended last night, insisting the two women did engage in changing votes. When did David Muir prove that Giuliani's statement was false? Did David Muir personally research all voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election? Of course not. So he can't declare something is false or not about the election. Giuliani then doubling down on his false claims to our Terry Moran after the trial ended last night. This is simply what Muir was told by others to think and say, because it matches his pre-existing political affiliation. Muir engaged in defamation on behalf of his political party of choice. But that's not something a Republican can take a news anchor to court for in 2023. The Georgia election worker defamation case centered around Rudy Giuliani declaring that he saw ballot workers pass a USB flash drive among them. He indicated that this flash drive must have been used with the election computers to help rig the Georgia election for Joe Biden. The ballot counters said that it was a breath mint passed between them. Every news story I read declared flatly, as of last week, that this was proven to be a breath mint before the trial had even finished. As with the mirror reporting on the election itself, no reporter actually proved that this was a breath mint passed between the two workers. But the burden of proof was on Rudy Giuliani for this assertion. So no prosecutor had to prove this was a breath mint, and neither did any judge. The prosecutor, judge, and jury in the state of Georgia were not inclined to favor a New York City mayor working for Donald Trump. It turns out there is actually footage of the passing incident itself. Let's see what we can make out. In the lady's defense, I can't see what's being passed between them. Neither could Rudy Giuliani. It does not appear to my eyesight to be a breath mint. It appears black and rectangular, which would be a strange breath mint. But again, the burden of proof was on the person making the accusation, Rudy Giuliani, not the ballot workers. If Giuliani were told by someone that this video proved election misconduct, that's not his fault. His failure here was making the assertion himself in public and repeating the charge based on what others told him. That's where Giuliani failed to make his case. If you don't have proof of election misconduct, you are in the wrong. A jury just decided Giuliani was $148 million in the wrong. That's a heck of an expensive breath mint. Giuliani made a series of errors, both in logic and moral judgment. If you're going to make such an inflammatory charge, you'd better have the goods. He didn't have the goods other than speculating on what they passed between them. This was wrong for him to do on a moral level. Logically, if fraud was planned, there are several other ways the workers could have engaged in election fraud. They didn't have to exchange a USB flash drive where they knew cameras would be present. What would have prevented them from passing this flash drive between them before they entered the building? And it's not like there was a nationwide shortage of USB flash drives in 2020. Had there been fraud planned by the Democratic Party of Georgia in that particular county, they could have made sure every worker had such a USB flash drive and not simply needing them to share one for the entire building. But that's just a matter of logic. Rudy Giuliani's efforts would have been better spent after the 2020 presidential election in two ways. One, he should have stuck to issuing public statements about known incidents where, in various states, poll observers were barred from entry into buildings where ballots were being counted after the 2020 presidential election. 
about to be an election for the history books with voters turning out in record numbers. The largest turnout in state history with more than 5 million votes cast, including 3 million by absentee ballots. Tensions, though, did run high while the votes were being counted at the TCF Center when dozens of poll watchers were turned away, being told the tally room was at capacity due to COVID-19 restrictions. Our Larry Spruill is live outside the TCF Center, and Larry, this scene involves supporters of President Trump shouting, stop the count. Some very tense moments outside the TCF Center Wednesday night. Both Trump and Biden supporters stood outside for hours. And two. Maybe Rudy shouldn't have said anything at all. Sorry, Rudy, but you will no longer be remembered for your courageous presence walking the streets of New York on 9-11. For every single person touched by this unthinkable tragedy, there's been one man who, above all others, has been the beacon holding this city together and leading it forward. This is a better city now than it was before the attack took place in terms of its spirituality and its understanding of what it means to be an American, its understanding of unity. We spoke with we Mayor Rudolph Giuliani, the ultimate general in his emergency command center in New York City. You know, having gone through this experience back on the 11th and then having gone through the experience with cancer the year before that, I've, I, I, I kind of have a philosophy that goes something like this. Every day, you never know. You don't know what's going to happen to you. So you might as well take advantage of life, not go hide somewhere. Instead, you are going in the history books for a $148 million breath mint. And that did not help the cause of former President Trump at all. So what does this have to do with David Muir's broadcast before the court case had even been settled? David Muir made a judgment without facts or proof. Giuliani then doubling down on his false claims to our Terry Moran after the trial ended last night, insisting the two women did engage in changing votes. Just because he wanted to side with his political party of choice. Muir had no proof for what he said this past week. And that means David Muir is guilty of the same sort of defamation that Rudy made, and he should also pay $148 million to the former mayor. Defamation only works one way in this country in 2023, and it's open season on anyone who worked for President Donald Trump. Rudy Giuliani should have known better. Thank you.